the NLP communication model. Have you ever wondered why people perceive things differently? Why is it that two sports commentators will have a very different opinion about a match? Why is it that two athletes will respond differently to certain playing conditions? Well, the NLP communication model will go a long way to answering those questions. We receive information from the outside world through our five senses, commonly known as VACOG. Visual, through our sight. Auditory, through our ears. Kinesthetic, through our touch and feel. Olfactory, through our noses. And gustatory, through our mouth. Now the brain receives that information from the external world and, and apparently we receive about 2 million pieces of information, pieces of data per second. Now that information is then filtered. It's either deleted, distorted or generalised. So deletion. Let's think about deletion. Think of a scenario. Um, let's say we are going to watch an event. Uh, perhaps we're going to watch Phantom of the Opera. Now when we go into the theatre, we sit down, and there's obviously people around us, we then have a focus on the stage. Now what we do is actually focus on that stage and block out any sort of external information that's not useful. So we delete that information and we can have a focus and attention on what's going on on stage. Now sportsmen and women have the ability to do this. They have a, a real focus of attention on their goal on what they're actually going to be doing. Whether they're actually concentrating on the delivery of a cricket ball or the speed of the squash ball around the court, they are able to focus their attention on the specifics of their sport and block out any external, um, perhaps crowd noise or people around them. If you're a sports coach, you may want to think about your players and what they're deleting. Perhaps some things that you said in your team talk, for instance. And actually, while we're on the subject, according to a study by George Miller, the professor of psychology, um, people are only able to handle between five and nine pieces of information at once. So just be aware of that when you are giving your, you know, your half-time uh, team talk. By giving a player a whole list of different things they need to remember when they're on the pitch, you're perhaps overloading them. For example, if I were to give you my telephone number to remember, you would probably be able to do it. However, if I gave you a shopping list of 25 items, it might prove a bit difficult or very challenging anyway. So just think about that when you're a coach, when you're giving team talks, half-time speeches, give players and athletes um, simple, clear, and not too much information. Distortion. Now we all distort things in our minds. Um, as with deletions, it's, it's neither good or bad, it's just what we do. Now if you're a positive person, you are more likely to distort something in a, a positive way and exaggerate it to make it seem even better. Some sports people blow a mistake or loss out of proportion. They add unnecessary stress to the, to the performance. So just be aware of that again as a coach. I mean, I've heard of sports people building their opponents up to be something they are not. Also, when you are taking a penalty in football, hockey or a free shot in netball, are you making the goal or hoop seem even smaller than it really is? or even the goalkeeper bigger than she is? Something to consider. Generalizations. Now we generalize data or information. We put things into categories. And we do this so it can be easily retrieved. The brain's internal filing system, you might call it. Now that can be very useful, obviously for retrieving information, but also can be uh, unuseful as well. And moving on to our other filters, language. These are the words we use externally and internally. 
Yes, we all talk to ourselves inside, don't we? The language we use determines our world. Values. Values are what's important to us. They determine how we spend our time. Values impact and drive our behaviours and motivation. So it's something that is really a strong filter and actually does make a big difference to the way people are performing and how they are motivated. We all have different beliefs. When other people's beliefs are different, then we might call them opinions. From the point of view of the communication model, if we believe something is true, then we might filter out or delete, distort, generalise information that contradicts it. Let's look at a sporting example. If a footballer believes that they have a weak left foot, they will tend to filter out examples where they have kicked a ball well with their left foot. They might even distort it and say, oh, it was just lucky. Attitudes. An attitude is a collection of beliefs and values around a particular topic. And again, that's another filter. Moving on to our memories. Our memories and experiences will impact on how we filter stimuli. So if we have had a positive experience, similar to the situation we are in now, then it is likely we will have a positive internal representation and experience a positive state. Now, if we have um, experienced three, say, penalty shootout losses in previous games, then it is likely that we may react negatively to a shootout and get stressed if it should happen again. So these are our filters. The information, once filtered, creates our internal representations. Now these can be pictures, sounds, feelings, smells and tastes, even self-talk. The internal representation has an impact on our state. And our state has an impact on our physiology. Our state then has a huge impact on our behaviour and the behaviour obviously on our results. So you can see how this plays out and how this would work with sportsmen and women in terms of their ability to maintain a good state and get the behaviours they want and then obviously lead to the desired results.